Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm, uh, I am going to speak uh, on this bill. I hadn't been intending to speak, but I've just mentioned to your colleague, uh, David Shearer, uh, that uh, the speech that he gave earlier this evening gave me the inspiration uh, to speak on this particular bill. That's, that's right, Mr. Shearer. Mr. Shearer has given me inspiration to, to rise to my feet and speak on the Carter Observatory Act repeal bill. And um, it was interesting that uh, Mr. Alan Peachy, my local MP, uh, castigated Mr. Shearer. He, he made the point, and I thought quite fairly, that the Labour Party had been in power for nine years, and of course they had a lot of time uh, to do to address some of the issues that Mr. Shearer raised. But having, having said that, having said that uh, Mr. Peachy had been critical of Mr. Shearer's speech, I actually thought that Mr. Shearer raised some very good points, and, uh, and points just recently picked up by Sue Kedgley. And of course what Mr. Shearer talked about is he talked about the budget for research and development, the Fast Forward Fund. Uh, he talked about the, the government's commitment to put an extra $56 million a year uh, into uh, science and technology, and he talked about uh, the cost of running an observatory. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure it hasn't uh, missed the attention of any member of parliament but in the last 24 hours, we've actually had two power generators, in fact, rather two retailers, announce uh, increases in electricity um, as a consequence of the emissions trading scheme from the 1st of July. And as a consequence, Mr. Shearer's point's very well made, because electricity will actually cost more. Every individual, every business, uh, every entity in the country will actually pay more for their electricity, and it will cost more to run the Carter Observatory. And as Sue Kedgley says, the, um, we have to be concerned about falling budgets, and of course, this, this uh, I guess it's an own goal, because, um, because certainly the announcement that was made uh, yesterday by Mercury Energy, putting up uh, the price of electricity by 3.3%, uh, is essentially uh, a hidden profit to the government. So I guess it's a, an ill wind that uh, blows no good, because what we have, Mr Speaker, is we have the government's three main generators, including uh, Mighty River Power, that generates electricity on the Waikato River, doesn't, uh, doesn't make any carbon emissions, doesn't incur any emissions cost in response as a consequence of those generating electricity off the Waikato River. Um, but it says um, we're going to increase the wholesale price because Genesis will pay uh, for those emissions. Genesis will force up the wholesale price. And as a consequence, uh, Mercury can go out to its customers, keep a straight face or try to keep a straight face and say, look, we've had to incur, we're going to be incurring a higher wholesale price for the cost of electricity, and we're going to pass it on to you. Well, of course, Mr Speaker, that just simply results in a windfall gain to the government. And I find it very interesting that the figures that the government has put up for the revenue it will earn from the emissions trading scheme is $350 million, and it ignores those same um, basically hidden profits or those windfall profits. Because as owner, as owner of the... Um, Mighty River Power, as I back to the bill. Back, back to the bill. Well, I, I'm actually addressing the issue, uh, uh, Ms. Kedgley, that, that you raised. You were concerned. You were concerned about the cost of operating the Carter Observatory. You were concerned about the budget and the cost of operating and, and investment in science and technology. And I'm simply making the point. Well, you can laugh, but I'm simply making the point that electricity is going up from the 1st of July. All New Zealanders will pay for that, all institutions, all museums and all observatories. Well, um, you, you asked what that's got to do with the question. I, I noted that Mr Shearer devoted a large part of his speech to the cost of operating observatories, the cost of operating scientific institutions, and you did yourself the same. And I'm simply making the point, Mr, Mr. Speaker, that you uh, incur costs in running these things, and we've had, in the last 24 hours... Uh, Mercury Energy announced it's increasing the price of electricity by 3.3% and Contact Energy also announcing it's increasing the price of electricity by 32 And it's all very well for the Minister of Climate Change to say, well, look, isn't that great news? Isn't that great news? We'd forecast electricity to go up by 5% and it's only going up by 33 Well, I say to the, the, the Minister of Climate Change, there's 12 more months in this year and um, 12 more months and I'm sure by the end of that 12 months we will have had that 5% increase. Uh, the, um, let me... Well, it's, it's, uh, you, you say a climate change uh, believer. I, uh, the Minister of Science and Technology was telling me that one of the things that the, uh, the scientists at the Carter Observatory um, follow 
of the so-called Marinkovic cycles, which you might understand a, a bit about uh, Mr. Smith, Dr. Smith. And uh, he tells me that that's, uh, the people who believe in the Marinkovic cycles put that as an alternative hypothesis for the changes in the global temperatures that we've observed. But Mr. Speaker, you've been very generous. I think I've made my point, and uh, the ACT Party will be supporting this bill. Thank you. <laughs> Call Stuart Nash. Mr. Speaker, uh, whenever I hear John Biscowan speak, the first thing he says is, I wasn't going to take a call on this bill, but I've changed my mind. <laughs>